Commission and Discussions, which is the facilities update and initial survey results. Um, to Anthony, uh, Mr. Merlini, and Mr. White, thank you very much for your efforts, especially especially you, Mr. White. They, you keep coming back, and you're so much help. So thank you. We look forward to what you have to speak. It's a privilege. So Mr. White will kick us off. Uh, he's going to give an overview of a recent community survey uh, that we uh, published asking for input and a uh, temperature check of uh, different areas of a proposed potential bond the community would support. It's very important we use proposed <coughs> and potential. Uh, our building condition survey was completed last, uh, last spring into the summer. We have some uh, debt that's retiring in the 17-18 school year, and so our facilities committee and, and the board at our last board meeting, our second to last board meeting in November 9, talked about putting, uh, identifying needs which match retiring debt uh, so we don't increase taxes, and we asked Mr. White to put a survey together as he have had <coughs> for a number of years with some trend data to give us some recommendations. So with that, David White. Uh, Starting in 2002, uh, uh, we've been conducting periodic surveys of the district. Uh, the first four years, or three years, from say 2002 through 2007 were done by telephone. Uh, and since 2012, we've done them uh, through the internet, using Survey Monkey or uh, uh, our own facilities. And we've been collecting three, four, five hundred, six hundred interviews uh, per wave, so with some consistency in the questions, uh, a lot of consistency in terms of the way it's been looked at. So we have a, a fairly good, uh, a fairly good trend here, especially for uh, uh, school districts. I don't know too many school districts that have a fifteen-year, fourteen-year uh, uh, tracking study on the. Distribution that we get <coughs> in terms of the uh, um, uh, which one do I press to go uh, for? You press the right side on the around. There you go. There you go. Um, the uh, um, we had a very consistent distribution in terms of the geography. Now this doesn't mean which school the kids are in, this just means what the zip code is. But uh, it's pretty clear that at least geographically we're getting about the same sample from year to year. What we're not getting is uh, 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 as many people who are um, either not parents of children in the district or not staff members, teachers, as we would like to have. Our best guess <coughs> is that a, the, for the voters or the district as a whole, it's about 50-50, that is. About 50% of the people have uh, either kidney in the school system or our staff members are both, uh, and about 50% are not. Um, the, in 2012, we came in pretty close to that, uh, and that's been going down. This year, we only got uh, a, a much smaller number um, probably an unrepresentative number of people who are not uh, who are outside the, 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 the parent group or outside the staff group. Um, I'll show you later on that doesn't mean too much negative for the <coughs> particular question we're looking at right now, but it is an issue uh, uh, that we want uh, to try to do something about both in terms of surveying the district and in terms of uh, the other efforts that the district does. Now, we started off uh, with uh, uh, asking about science rooms in the high school. Uh, and comparing apples to apples, that is comparing the, the parents and staff three years ago to parents and staff this year, it's pretty clear that this proposal uh, did a little bit better uh, than, the, than the similar proposal that was put forward in 2013. The, the green Pac-Man there represents the positive yes answer. Uh, same thing among people who are not parents, although again, particularly in 2016, I wouldn't want to stake my life on the representative nature of that group of people, those 107 people. 
Now, the reasons, sir. Anthony may have to answer this question, but when we're talking about science rooms, what are we talking about? We're talking about Project Lead the Way science rooms? We're talking about just science rooms? It was a very general uh, prompt, and it's not something that I would have expected the most of the respondents in the survey to have a real handle on what we're talking about. Okay. The, uh, uh, one of the things that you'll notice when we get a couple of slides later on is that the nature of the reasons why uh, differ quite dramatically between the supporters or the people who are for the, uh, the science rooms and the people who are for the auditoriums. Okay. Uh, here, it's, it's a, uh, uh, there isn't a whole lot of reference to uh, uh, what the science rooms are like. They're just saying, oh, we got a, we got a back science, we got either uh, general support or uh, uh, it's important to have up-to-date science stuff. Okay. Uh, the, uh, um, the no tax increase uh, promise was certainly noticed, uh, but it is not the single biggest uh, uh, reason. And there doesn't appear to be any significant opposition to, uh, to that. Th these are, this is everybody grouped together, parents, non-parents, everybody we got. And those are counts, not percentages. That's, uh, that's the way we handled it before, and it's a reasonably uh, uh, legitimate way to deal with that. And you kind of summarized these, because I saw some of the early ones, and they were anywhere from two words to 20, 2,000. Yeah, I guess it, the idea here is when you've got several hundred responses, the idea is to try to extract a common thread. Uh, and it's a, it's a fairly subjective process. Uh, uh, but you go through it, and you, you, you tick down the various ideas, the various concepts they brought up, and the ones that seem to go together. You could, there are other ways to do it, you, uh, but in, in, for a survey of this nature, this is probably the most legitimate uh, way to handle it. You can do all sorts of elaborate statistical and textual analyses, but I don't think you need to do it here. So the free thought, the free response seems to get the, uh, the best range of responses. You do it to, and one of the reasons why you do that is to make sure that you're not asking the wrong question on a closed-end basis. It's really easy to get a question wrong, as I'm sure you know. And one of the checks is to have an internal way of sort of, you know, why did you answer it that way? Uh, and, if, and if it's clear that they misunderstood what you what you asked, then you, know, you, you better you got to fix it. Thank you. Um, middle school, uh, pretty much the same story. Much better support uh, in, for the for the science rooms in in. Uh, this year than three years. Now, I didn't uh, go through the open-ended responses. Uh, for one reason, a lot of them just said same as before, or I, you, I, I answered that already. So it's, it's uh, difficult to uh, uh, extract anything useful out of that. <coughs> now, we also asked about the auditoriums in high school and middle school. Again, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, only about half of the uh, uh, the group that we interviewed supported the uh, 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 amount. Uh, this year, uh, uh, close under three quarters. And the majority of people who are not uh, parents or staff again uh, supported a much different picture than we, than we got two years ago. Now, I'm not certain that if we had a representative sample, this pattern would would uh, uh, still exist, but. Uh, there's nothing here to indicate that you've got a real serious problem with an auditorium problem, let's put it that way. Now, the reasons why or where we get into this, uh, a lot of people have been in the, in the auditorium, probably more than been in the classrooms, <coughs> and I think that's reflected in the, uh, in the, uh, in the answers you get there. Uh, you get a lot of comments about, oh, that place is a dump that really needs to be fixed. The, uh, um, uh, and that's one of the reasons why you don't, uh, the no tax increase, for instance, uh, doesn't come up as often. And again, uh, you don't have a lot of, or a very focused number of negative comments. <clears throat> but last year during the performance at the high school, I mean, it couldn't even start on time because there was something with the air conditioning and it was a hold up. And I think people are just becoming much more cognizant that there's problems in the high school auditorium 
that have to be addressed, you know. May so. well be. Middle school, not quite as uh, enthusiastic in terms of the support. That is so surprising. Uh, I don't have a, a trend here because we didn't ask about this three years ago. Uh, but uh, you still have a, a, a small majority of total sample and about a, uh, an even number in terms of the people who are uh, not parents or staff uh, uh, that support it. <coughs> Uh, here's, here's the the, uh, the term thing. A majority of the people are supporting uh, 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 repairs to the turf and, and to the uh, into the track. Um, that's both in terms of parents and in terms of not parents. The key takeaway on this bit is the reason why they're for it and why they're against it. You've got a significant safety issue uh, being mentioned both by, uh, in terms of positives and in terms of negatives, but relative to turf. And this includes people who are parents and people who are not parents. People, some people think that it's either a cancer, a car carcinogen, a, uh, uh, damages girls' knees, uh, uh, water supply issues, you know, there's a whole raft of, uh, of, of stuff against uh, that, that they're, that's covered under that, that 50 comments there that are against turf. <coughs> You see it, sorry? The competition in other districts, is that competition with other districts, or you need it for competition to be? It's primarily, um, uh, we look bad relative to other districts, but they do mention that when other districts come here to compete, they, they, they don't feel uh, that, that our facilities are up to par. The, uh, um, uh, yeah, kind of what I was getting, the people mentioned, that you can actually play better on the surface, you know, that the competition is better. You, well, you get it both ways. Uh, the, uh, um, there are, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to uh, give you a proportion because it really depends on whose kid is, uh, whether the, the child is actually playing on this stuff or not. Uh, the, uh, the key to it is that you've got to address the safety issue. Uh, uh, you know, full stop. That just has to be done because you can't you can't go out there uh, with a significant number of negatives among people who otherwise would support the issue. Maybe it might behoove us to have some discussion about turf fields and the different turf fields that are available. I mean, I think education is important. If that's what we're even going to consider, you know, I I think maybe Anthony or whoever could talk about turf fields and, you know, what are the pros and cons. And you, you if people are upset about the safety features, and that is something that, you know, might deter people from voting for it, maybe we do need a presentation where people can come and ask questions to the right, you know, experts yeah. in the field. Yeah, I think you, it, I, it's something, I don't think it's going to be as much a voting issue as a common sense issue. Uh, uh, the you don't want to do anything that uh, uh, a significant portion of the people uh, uh, have you know real moral reservations about uh, without without at least attempting to address those reservations. Right, but I think the more we educate people and even ourselves. I mean, I'm not 100% sure of what's the difference between turf and you know, regular grass, what what are the pros and cons of, of both, you know, type of fields. So I, I think when we had talked about this in policy, we had said, you know, the more people that come out, the better it is that we have more education for people that we're providing. You're in luck, because Anthony, Joe, and Enrique know about Corco, Corco, what is it, Corco nut? Cor Corco? Cork, 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 cork and coconut fill, and that was our visit a couple Mondays ago well, coconut to, uh, to Pleasantville. <laughs> they they just passed a bond to replace their field, and while the the vote and the the effort to gain public support wasn't an issue about replacing turf for turf, it was about the fill. Right, and they provided us with five different all natural organic fills that they that they discussed. So they had 
Um, they had specialists come in talking about the organic, all natural fill, not the, the crumb rubber, so on and so forth. And, right. and one of the benefits, Barbara, to mention, address your point, one of the benefits uh, for being late to the game, late to the turf game, uh, no pun intended, <laughs> is almost every other district has put out the, the Q&As, have put out the, the studies from whether it's Section 1 or the New York State Athletic Association, NCAA, so on and so forth. So we're in the process of pulling all of that information in, and if we choose to go forward, uh, we'll, we'll create designated space on our website, we'll have a rolling question and answer. Um, some districts have done a, a concept of just ask where people can send in sort of questions uh, anom anonymous anonymous anonymous. Yeah. <laughs> send in questions and a team uh, of district represent representatives, let's just say Anthony, Enrique and myself, would look at those questions on a Thursday afternoon or a Friday morning, categorize them in the themes and then post the results online so you have a, a scrolling dialogue, you know, searchable, so on and so forth. So a lot of that information is out there. Um, what Pleasantville did say they did is they committed a, a board <coughs> meeting or two to, to having a, a consultant talk about the different organic types. I think it was just $90,000 beyond the, the price of the turf and, and they put all of those concerns to bed. Okay. But that's, I think, that like very important. Yeah. And we had yeah. we had spoken about that at, at our policy meeting yep. that the more education you provide for people, the better it is. I, I, uh, uh, this is the only uh, uh, issue that it really comes out of all this research. Everything else is is fairly is, is you know, green light. This is this is something that you do want to do on hand. Just out of curiosity, um, mm -hmm. did in, in early somewhere in there, and I see you have it here. But overall, how big a, um, a factor is it that it's it's no new dollars, if you will? I mean that it's no net tax I, increase. I can't give you a straight answer on that because um, I think a lot of the non-specific support. You see, we have support non-specific and opposed non-specific. I think a lot of the non-specific support would disappear if you didn't have that no tax pledge. Uh, uh, conversely, I think that it's it sounds greedy to sit there. Well, the reason I'm back in this is because it's not going to increase my taxes. So I'm not sure people will actually write that down. Uh, well, somebody did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, for a few did, but uh, you know, we got some pretty mean faced people here. The uh, this uh, uh, I know I wouldn't do it if somebody asked me. The uh, um, but it makes it a walk. I mean, yeah, it's a good thing, and I mean, it's an added benefit. I'm just wondering how big. I, if I there can't was give you straight okay. well, it's, it's and, and I wouldn't. Did they not read that it was? <coughs> I wouldn't yeah, expect that, that you would get it. Out of this it's an opportunity, opportunity cost issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not. It's not. People don't, as you know, costing issues get really twisted up in people's heads, and this is nowhere near sophisticated enough to get at that. And I'm not sure I would. Want to jump into that? that no, I was just, um, I just was interested if that part was was in there. I mean, it's just how how major you know, that aspect is. Well, it's bigger than a bird box. I'll tell you that. Thank you. <laughs> Can you just remind us how many potential voters are there in the district? I have this number. <laughs> Thank Charles you. asked for it and um, wasn't able to, to put it in. Roseanne did some analysis. Uh, 10,032 registered voters. As of the last vote. As of the last vote. So this is a tiny little sampling of the people. No, no, no. No, well, no, no it's not a tiny little sampling. It's a tiny little sampling of people who come out to vote. Yeah. It's about a quarter of the biggest vote. They, they tend to come out in the Woodward. Yeah, that's like 1,500. Not even, actually. It was less. It was in the sevens. Sevens to nines. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know the prior survey is <coughs> pretty yeah. on target as far as what the actual voting mm -hmm. came out. It, 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 it did come out. And, yeah. It was the numbers. The numbers came out fairly. Well, yeah, the last I vote would, was yeah, in the I 700 would. range. Yeah. The yeah. budget vote. Right. No, no, no. I well, mean, was, I mean the proportions from the surveys. Well, the tax cap. People don't care anymore. Fairly they representative of how people voted. Not that you care, but it's it's a lot. I wouldn't want to uh, swear that this is going to be as uh, projectable or as good at forecasting as the previous waves have been because of this issue about the non-parents. Uh, uh, um, uh, 
part of the reason the other the previous waves have been so uh, uh, good at forecasting is just luck. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, uh, there are all sorts of methodological reasons to say that uh, you know, it's not necessarily going to happen here. In this particular case, though, I see nothing in here that uh, causes concern uh, about the bonds that you're talking about, right. except this one uh, safety tier issue mm -hmm. you have to do with tier, and the fact that you want to talk more to the people uh, who are on parents and staff. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's what the, uh, oh, we did ask, at the very end about other projects. Um, I couldn't come up with a pattern in there. Uh, what I did do is look at uh, mentions of which level of school they were talking about, and it seems pretty well spread across. That is, um, uh, the high school, the middle school, and the, and the elementary. This represents roughly the, the population in each, those, in each of those levels, and the student population in each of those levels. The, uh, um, uh, and I didn't see anything that, uh, a couple years ago, we, w when we did this, we asked a similar question. And we said, well, we need turf and we need repairs to the auditorium. Uh, uh, nothing like that is lurking out there, at least not according to this response. While we do that, you got 14 and a half uh, the minutes. bond vote from uh, December 2013 was 529 yes, 254 no, so under 800. And that did increase taxes, but again, was. Yeah, but it was all needy. Yeah. yeah. And for comparison. 250 people said we didn't need some. Exactly. Uh, yes. Our budget vote <coughs> from May 17th, budget vote May 17th, uh, 536 yes, 163 no. I believe the biggest turnout we've ever had was 2,700. Yeah, but that was, I, I believe that was the, uh, that yeah. was. Yeah, you don't that, want to do that, that again, bond. but that was, that was, that's the biggest. <laughs> 2012. I'm not sure if it was that or it was the second go around on the uh, on the uh, 2000 the budget. or 2006. On the budget, 2006. that time when the budget was voted down. Yeah, I think that was the biggest one. You think that was bigger? I remember there were. I don't want to know. You don't want to know about it. It wasn't, wasn't any fun. It's history. All right. As I said a couple of times, there's no indication here that you have any issues with the, cla the science classroom or the um, auditorium uh, proposals. Um, uh, there's nothing that's coming up either in the um, uh, closed-ended questions or in the open-ended free response questions that uh, should lead you to worry. Uh, there's substantial uh, body of thought that turf is unsafe and you want to address that. Uh, uh, exactly how you go about that, I think you have a, a pretty good handle based on what the other districts have been. Um, the nature of uh, things has changed quite dramatically in the 14 years we've been conducting these studies. Uh, 10 or 15 years ago, uh, you know, you get a lot of uh, uh, opposition to things strictly on the basis of why are you hitting us with another 7% tax increase. The, uh, uh, um, we're not in that position anymore. Haven't been for some time. Uh, uh, and the economy is a whole lot better than it was four or five years ago. So you're just not going to see the kind of uh, desperate concern about taxes that you saw, say, in the uh, 2007 2012 study. <coughs> um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you've got more supporters. It just means that the opposition isn't, isn't as motivated, uh, at least in my opinion. Uh, uh, and one of the things that you want to do, if only to prepare for a rainy day, is to do whatever you can in terms of education outreach and uh, uh, getting people who are not in, in directly concerned with the, the district uh, to at least know what they're doing and why they're doing it. That's it. 
Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for all your efforts. Thank you, Judy. Mm -hmm.